Hello, uh, I'm going to go over chapter one, the science of biology for my college prep biology and my regular biology courses. Uh, this is just a way so you can listen to the notes and take notes while you're just listening to somebody kind of explain what's going on here. So in chapter one, this is just kind of like the science of biology or just general science terms that you have to know throughout the year. Um, of course, biology, we're going to start out with that term, study of life. One of the things that we do in this class is we break down words into prefixes and suffixes. Prefixes are at the beginning of words and suffixes are usually at the end. So you can see bio here means life, ology means study hub. So whenever you see ology, it's going to mean study of uh, when you see it like in paleontology or microbiology, things like that. But bio means life, which just means this is the study of life. And everything we go over in this course is going to be looking at how life uh, evolves and how life just changes in these stru different structures within life. So we're just generally looking at life. What is science? This is, in gather, or this is a organized way of gathering and uh, in analyzing in information and evidence of the natural world. Um, science is a process, not a thing. I have in my classroom something that says science is a verb. Uh, one thing that I want you to understand is it's not just a bunch of old people just you know, memorizing facts and just, you know, taking notes. It's a process. It's a thing. It's a, it's a way of, of, of life. It's a, you know, it's experimentation. It's a verb. It's not just a, you know, we just sit here and, 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 and learn facts. So understand that this is a way of learning how to learn about the world. Now the, this is the scientific method. This is a way where I, uh, this is, Again, I, I talk about this in class. I say, you know, this is the scientific method. Observation, ask questions, form hypothesis, experiment, and then you analyze your results. This is kind of crap, though. Uh, I show a video throughout the uh, the year where, where I talk about how, or the video talks about how that's not really science. Now, there is framework within this, but, like, science is a lot more interesting, and there's a lot more steps, and there's a lot more just intricacies, communication, working with people. So this is not what scientists do on a daily basis, but it's a good start to kind of talk about the different processes within science. But I, I don't like to use this and say, hey, this is, this is verbatim how science works. Remember that an educated guess is a hypothesis. Uh, I know you've won over this in your middle school classes. So, um, yeah, sorry, I'm just going to leave it there. Experimentation, this includes, let me go back, this includes all of the procedures and materials that you use in an experiment. Uh, we do controlled experiments in here, which means that every experiment is going to uh, have only one variable that's changed, and that's going to be your independent variable, and that's what we're going to go over next. So remember, only one variable is changed. So again, this is the one you change, so your independent variable. Usually we have the independent variable on the x-axis, while on the y-axis we have the dependent variable. That is dependent on the x-axis, so or the, or the independent variable, which means this is what we're going to take our data from. Uh, if this makes sense to you, it's because, you know, you went over this in your middle school classes and your, your, uh, maybe you're in like a ninth grade class as well. But this is just the, de the dependent variable. This depends on the independent variable. So if we're like seeing how much water affects plant growth, the independent variable here is how much water we give the plant. The dependent variable is the plant growth because the plant growth depends on how much water you give the plant. Scientific theory is a well-tested explanation that makes sense of a great variety of facts and observations. This explains how. Um, a lot of people think that this is just a guess by science, and it's not. Um, this is kind of like our pinnacle in science. This is our like our, our one of our best things that we can we you know we can produce um, because there's so much evidence behind these scientific theories. And what people don't like is that theories can change with new evidence. Um, and that's the that's the great thing about theories is they they themselves become more and more accurate as time and information goes on. The central theme in biology, which I absolutely love, I love talking about evolution and learning about evolution, but this is the central theme in biology. And the first definition I give you is change over time. Um, you don't have to memorize this quote, but I love talking about this quote in class and talking about how uh, everything in, in biology is connected through evolution. The six characteristics of life, oh, let me go back. The six characteristics of life are uh, all cells or all um, uh, Living things must grow and develop. They must respond to stimuli or have a homeostasis, which means uh, what we're going to talk about next year is a uh, way to regulate internal temperatures or conditions like pH, uh, how much water you have in your system. Um, they must be able to reproduce, obtain and use energy, and have a genetic code. Lastly, they also ha have to have cells. So all of these characteristics must be exhibited by something for it to be living. Um, other books might have seven or eight. I choose these six because they're easier, and uh, most books have these six characteristics. So just understand these. Um, it might, there might be some variants on other uh, platforms. 
Homeostasis, this is the ability for an organism to regulate, regulate like I said, internal environments, uh, such as temperature, pH, water levels, and, and, and there's more than that, but um, that's what's called homeostasis. We have that, obviously, when we get too hot, we sweat. When we get too cold, we shiver. So that's what homeostasis looks like in us. Lastly, there is a way that, oops, let me go back, that we organize life. I don't have the kids memorize this. Um, I just start from the very smallest, which is the atom, and move up into the biosphere then. So we just, we just kind of organize life based on this structure. Um, and we're, we're going to go through that this year. So obviously, in the next chapter, we're going to start with chemistry. We start with the atom. We move to the molecule and macromolecules. And we just keep on getting larger and larger. And we group things in these levels based on how large they are. I don't have you memorize this, but, the, by, uh, but by the end of the year, I do expect you to have some understanding of what's bigger than what, what's smaller than what. So that end, that's going to end chapter one for us. I know it's a quick chapter, but this is all that you have to kind of know for chapter one.